Delhi is not safe. Not at hmm. no time of the day. Oh, ever. Sad. Also, Delhi, I would avoid as a woman, anyone. Meet Michaela, a German expert who's lived in India for almost 10 years. She's a director, an actress, and a co founder of a studio specializing in experimental films and theater. Michaela shares her insights of the most dangerous places for women in India, the uniqueness of Indian super rich people, and why the notion of Indians always being late is a myth. I'm Max, let's go. What's the most shocking experience you had in India so far? Like something like really memorable? If you go to Delhi as a woman, it's not safe. Mumbai is pretty. Mumbai is super safe. Feels like yeah, pretty yeah. safe, yeah. Mumbai, I got into some situations also in the middle of the night. Like once, I took a train and it didn't go anywhere. It just went to the garage where the trains go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like oh, yeah. a really dangerous and dodgy place. Oh, like wow. you don't want to be there in the middle of the night, but nothing yeah. happened. I yeah. mean, it felt. And then a you bit... sleep in the train. No, no. I just, <laughs> I just made a beeline for <laughs> out. Um, I actually, the train was still moving when I realized it was going into the hangar. I just jumped out of the train and uh, like went. Mm. Um, mm. So that, but even that moment, which I felt was kind of like mm, questionable, maybe not very smart. It was really safe, but Delhi is not safe. Not at mm. no time of the day. Oh, ever. Sad. Also, Delhi, I would avoid as a woman, anyone. Um, like what, what what can happen I think mean, there's a lot of assaults happening and yeah. like just groping in public but like <laughs> no like, sense of anything like rape or yeah, or just I'm, or just people like abuse you physically um, I think everything the whole range is possible yeah. and depending on <laughs> the time of the day and the place you're in so oh. yeah that was pretty shocking so I think um, there's a lot of suppression still in certain parts of certain people mm. and uh, that comes out in very disturbing ways so that was definitely yeah I've had a couple of those encounters yeah, that's still um, very memorable in terms of a negative experience. And I mean, positive experience, I had so many. I had so many positive experiences. Like how people, how things just fall into place. Like I would go on a random train ride and the train is delayed by 24 hours and then they land in the middle of the night somewhere and somebody would just give me like a place to sleep in their house uh, just randomly. Mm, and you make wow. friends with them and it's like a genuine thing and they just take mm. you home. And wow. because they're like, well, your schedule is really messed up because your train came late and nothing's working out. So let me help you out and I'll just yeah. take you in and you don't have to worry about anything. And that has happened like multiple times. Oh, wow. um, so the generosity and the the hospitality is like unsurpassed. It's and how things just fall into place. You think about something and then that person walks down the street just like that magically and it happens mm. or you want to go somewhere and uh, yeah like it happened with me when me and my now husband were just friends. I was talking to a friend I still remember I was in South India and I was talking to a friend randomly. I was like, you know what? One place that's really on my bucket list is both. It's like difficult to get there by train, like so many connections. How will I get there and why would I go there? I mean, I wanted to go there for the museum. There's a really famous ethnological museum. Yeah. And in that very moment, he texted me. He's like, hey, I'm Bhopal right now. I'm shooting and I'm really bored. Um, production is okay to pay like the train for you. Do you want to come? I'm like, uh -huh. yay, <laughs> of course. <laughs> coming so those magical things this, happen this, all the time this sounds very like spiritual yeah, so yeah this kind spiritual. of un universe give you this opportunity yes this kind of thing yes i think that happens here a lot like things just fall into place weirdly like you think about uh -huh. them and they happen <laughs> just gotta trust the universe mm. i have really experienced this over here um, in india it's, there's something in the air how your opinion about india changed after this nine years I don't want to say Bombay is not India, but Bombay is so different from the rest of the country mm. that it's really incomparable. Like Bombay is a lot like Berlin. It's like grungy, it's artsy, mm. it has different pockets with different people, like posh people, not so <coughs> posh people, working class, immigrants. I like that about Bombay. It's much more uh, metropolitan and hipster than I would have thought. It's mm. so, like, <laughs> like Bandra is just like... Yeah. When you live in Bombay, all the preconceptions that you have about India, like being spiritual, the worst preconceptions kind of get sucked out of you because there's no spirituality in the city. I no? can't find it. I feel it. Oh, okay. Interesting. <laughs> it's really tough. I mean, there are yoga centers and everything, but it's really tough to keep up your um, spiritual balance. Whereas in the rest of the country, I still feel when you yeah. go there, there's some magic and there's magic happening and things just fall into place magically like they don't mm. do in any other place. So I think that's still true, that, that preconception that I had. When I came here also, I thought that India, and India is like a lot of things are going all over the place and people are maybe not professional and it's like, 
time as not being a third Jew like it would be in the West. But that's also a misconception because is that's it? true in some parts. Uh -huh. Oh yes, even okay. professionally, it's uh -huh. very true in some parts. And I don't like working with these parts <laughs> uh -huh. um, of geographically or uh, socially. Like, but if you find the right people, they're as professional, as punctual, as like um, sincere as you would find them anywhere else in the world. It's like these stereotypes that get picked out because they're obvious to see, and it's like maybe on the surface, but once you live and you really make your connections, you realize it's not like that. Even when we work with people abroad, they are amazed once they work with us and they see the people we work with. They're like, oh, this is also professional. And I was like, yeah, you know, Indian <laughs> people are also professional people. They've also studied and learned a craft and they know what they're doing. Yeah. It's just, if you come here um, and you just scratch on the surface, you might come across some people which are not so, um, not the way you vibe. Mm -hmm. and you just have to, it takes longer time to find the people that are on the same wavelength a lot of people still think that maybe india's backward because you see these mm -hmm. like even the portrayals and travelogues and all of that of india they're also exoticized and that there are people all over the world that you can actually relate to like even people who grew up in india went to school in india have a job in india they listen to the same music, they have the same memories of certain TV shows that you watch, they talk about the same topics, they're upset about things happening in the world politically, they are aware of elections in the US going mm. on or um, about the New Zealand Prime Minister quitting. <laughs> like, they're all aware of those things or about the queer um, struggle, even though India is getting more and more restrictive concerning like gay love, for example. That doesn't mean that the people are like that, like there are certain to, uh, pockets of society which are very woke and very like they talk about the same things than people in Berlin or in Paris or in Auckland and um, I think that's a big misconception that I also had I wasn't aware that people are here are actually as globally connected and interested as other people at mm. that. because the only thing that we see whenever we watch TV or even on YouTube, like it's all like, oh, I'm going here to find my guru, and it's like, it's amazing. There are also these ashrams, and it's quite an amazing experience to go on like that trip and have a trip in India and like drive by train and on the open door and like be like, whoa, no rules, I can drive in my flip flops on a scooter mm. or me with my two kids, and it's completely fine. So those, uh, it's nice to have that trip, but. It's also, people are very relatable. It's just people all over the world seem to be, I think, becoming more and more, not similar, but I think the world is, on a positive note, even though there's so much happening in the world that's really upsetting me, I think on the positive note is that the world is growing together. Like the millennials and everyone younger, mm. have they watch the same stuff. They have the same memories and that's nice. I think sometimes uh, even on YouTube, like vloggers portraying India, like kind of one-sided. Yeah. I think it's either slums, and like, oh shit, it's like dirty everywhere and like going slums, which is impressive. Like I, mm -hmm. I my first time in Mumbai and I went to the slums, I had a tour and I was like, wow. So basically it's what like shocked people. Or it's this spirituality mm. and Sadhguru kind of thing. People overlook that there are normal people living here. Like, yeah. you know, my friend who is doing a food startup and he's struggling. <coughs> he's getting funding from international companies and he's struggling with the same things <coughs> that anybody who starts a startup right now anywhere in the world struggles with. Or my friend who's a banker, she goes to work every day in her suit and her heels, looks just like anyone in New York. Like, these are normal people. It's just, yeah. uh, that's, but of course, India is so very different from the world. Like, for example, if you talk about poverty and riches, that kind of poverty, poverty exists everywhere. I think, especially like, probably like, if you look at New York or US, like that kind of poverty you would, and Russia, that kind of poverty you would maybe not see in Europe. So that's already startling. And in India, it's even more. But then also the riches, like rich people here are really rich. Like they're so rich. <coughs> like you go to their houses and the door handles are made out of gold. They're not plated with gold, they're made out of gold. Mm. <laughs> I can't even, like I remember my mom had maybe one gold necklace. You know, you have one gold ring, that's your wedding ring, that's it. Yeah. And here, so rich people are really rich mm. and they live right next to it. And they seem to not bother, like if you're in the fanciest hotels over here, you are in a suite and you have the sea view and the slum view. Like you mm. live on the 30th floor and you see just blue 
plastic coverings of the slum and you see the sea but and people seem to not bother like they seem to not register like hmm i'm sitting here in a gold plated room which is for like thousands of dollars and there are these really poor people who earn what you spend on a meal probably in a year it's crazy it's just crass crass differences that's i think definitely doesn't exist anywhere else in the world i don't think so not next to each other it exists there are poor people and rich people in every country but mm. like sharing a wall i don't think that exists anywhere mm. i think that's really only in india you mentioned that um like rich people live like super rich life uh, mm -hmm. gold stuff and do you, do you experience yourself like coming to i don't know parties or some production shoots Yeah, I've seen quite some things. <laughs> Can you tell, like, any like, no, like, like the biggest, the biggest impression that you have? It's really funny because most time you enter the house, you're like, it's kind of like um, anticlimactic. If you come from Europe, as if you live in Bombay, because in Bombay most people live in apartments. Even really, really rich people still live in apartments. They may have like six, seven rooms in that apartment, yeah. but it's still a flat. Not a house, you mean? Not yeah? a house. Yeah. Like Shahrukh Khan lives in a house. Yeah. But even that house was like nice. Like, I wasn't impressed. Um, You've been to the house? Yeah, because Bombay is so expensive. And mm. I think they have lots of really fancy villas, probably in cheaper places, which are huge. And I've seen some villas here outside, like Alibag is a place where people go for like weekend trips and some people have villas there. It's just, I mean, there's pools on the front and on the back and there's golden statues outside. And it's just, it's like a five-star resort, but people live there. Mm. So And also the, the amount of um, help they have in the house, like... Uh, staff so you have people who serve you like the moment you come in somebody comes with like white gloves and serves you a glass of water it's like these but they're not butlers they are not like it's just a lot of helps so they have like six seven cooks doing six seven cuis cuisines every day and this cook only does the chopping and this cook only does the cooking and this wow. one is called a maharaj so he oversees everything and mm. has the vision of the food it's like very unusual for someone coming from europe right yeah this yeah it's very of, unusual kind of i think now i got so used to it i don't even realize how unusual yeah. it is it's like rich people in sweden would be like driving tesla or something i know yeah exactly uh, you know what I mean? and they would st they would go to the organic shop and that's yeah. what they would do <laughs> they wouldn't send somebody to cook for them in the organic <laughs> shop ever <laughs> So, yeah, the amount of staff is quite tremendous. Here there's some expectation that comes with status. You have to have somebody serving people if you're that rich. Mm. It's just like it, you have to. I don't like even if you want to pay them really well and you do pay them really well. It's just like a status thing. Like once you're in a certain category, you probably have to have that because people who come to your house expect that they come from the same amount of money. They're not used to grabbing their own water at their own house. Why should they do it somewhere else where they come as a guest? And I think that's always been here that people just always <laughs> had servants. I don't know, maybe the British brought that in because they had so many servants when they were colonizers and then everybody aspired to it. Or if it was before the British and the British were like, this is cool, let's do this as well. I don't know how it happened, but it's just mm. been there. Like everyone has house helps and just rich people have like so many of them. Do you have a help? Uh, yeah, I have one yeah. help, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's my she angel. Lives. I won't, I have I don't know what I would do without her. She is just amazing. She lives in or she, come, she, yeah, she comes? She comes. She comes for two hours a day. When I came here first, I thought I can do everything by myself. I got a <laughs> vacuum cleaner. Um, and I thought, why should I employ people to like do the cleaning? But first of all, Bombay is really dirty. Like so much dust. Uh, like back in Germany, I would probably clean my windows once every three months. Yeah. Here you have to clean them once a week. You do have to clean them. You can't look outside anymore otherwise. Or I would do vacuum cleaning once a week, in a good <laughs> month once a week, in a bad month once a month. Here you have to do it every day, twice. Oh. Like brooming. Mm. Vacuum cleaning doesn't even do it. It would be too exhausting with all the dust. Brooming twice a day because it's just so dusty. So I'm really glad that I have her and she's making amazing food and I can't cook Indian that well. And she always wants to learn. So whenever I tell her recipes, um, mm. it's amazing how um, she can't read or write, but um, she still manages to do it. So when I tell her something, she just voice, um, voice searches on Google and then she oh, watches YouTube wow. videos. Mm. And even if they don't speak her language, she just scrolls through it and see what they do and then she does it. Mm. So she's, she's really passionate about food, so it's great. Nice. We get to eat. How old is she? She's 43, yeah. 44. Can I ask like, how much you pay her? Or like, what's the range of, let's say, for this kind of help, what would be the, the salary? Mm, I think for somebody who comes for an hour a day, people pay anything between 10 to 15 um, uh, thousand rupees a mm. month 
So it's like, f I would say 50 to 200 euros probably a month. Mm. For a but she has many houses. So yeah. she works for like seven different houses. Okay, so she can make decent money, yeah? Yeah, but she kind, yeah. is also, she has worked a hard, long way to reach there. She started working as a nanny when she was nine. Wow. For, she comes from a village, so the rich landlord over there, they yeah. have nannies for each child, one nanny. So she started as a nanny when she was nine years old. <coughs> and then she had her first child when she was, I think, 18. Then she had another daughter now when she was like in her 30s. Her daughter now is 10 uh, and living a very different life than her first daughter, mm. <laughs> obviously. So she's worked really hard to reach there. And where has she reached? She's still like, she still gets up in the morning at like five and makes food for her daughter and sends her off to school and then comes to yeah. work. So it's a really tough life. It's yeah. really tough. I consider her part of family. I don't know what I would do without her. She really helped me out with my younger son so much when I had to go to work. She mm. and I ran late. She would come and like put yeah. him to sleep or. That's very sweet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this mess is an yeah. organized mess of our lab. <laughs> We have our film rolls over here, um, our projectors and editing equipment. Like we edit, we cut it with real mm. cutters. These are cutters actually, you can cut film with it. So you put film inside and then mm. it cuts on both sides, how it used to be earlier. Oh, that's so cool. It's yeah. Like very, very tactile. I was living in Sweden mm. and it was so hard to get a job, even an internship. It was so hard. And then I thought, well, why should I slug it out in a cold country where it's always dark? Mm. Um, if I can just come here and I don't have to do anything because there's so much work, you just need to tell people that you're able to do it. And then after a while, you'll get some kind of work and then we see how it develops and then it progressed and then we started our own company together. And then I thought as soon as we have kids and I have to go to school, mm. I'll move out of here because the school system sucks. But um, now I have kids and I go <laughs> to school. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still here because yeah. I realized this. like once there's all these preconceptions that you have when you move to a country, right? Mm. So when you move to India and you meet a lot of people our age, they went through really like terrible schooling system, like road learning, no thinking, mm. terrible teachers and like no freedom. And so you don't want that for your kids, obviously, especially if you come from Germany or Europe where it's much more free. And compared to India, we don't study at all. I mean, everybody's saying German system is stressful. It's not compared to the Indian one oh. at all. It's like oh, really? super chill. So I didn't want that for my kids. But yeah. um, then once you read a little bit into it and you really see the options, um, there's quite some amazing stuff happening here. And it's like new age schools with completely new approaches and international oh. and stuff that you wouldn't even get in Germany because it's technologically so backward compared to India. I think once you live in a place and you really dig deeper, then you can find some gems. Uh, right now we're really happy oh. and I don't know when I'll go back. No? <laughs> I have no idea. I don't think I'll be in India forever, honestly, just because that's not the kind of person I am. I think I like to be on the move and discover new things. Mm. But right now I'm discovering new things professionally, not necessarily geographically. So once I'm done with that, I'll move on. And this is a collection of our, some of our projectors. Uh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> some of the old ones. Right? Yeah. And they're all actually a lot of them are from German school teachers and schools. Mm -hmm which take very good care of this stuff. This is where we keep our stock. Can I see what you have in the fridge? Yeah, beer, I think, or mead, actually. And our film, of course, there's film everywhere. Oh, no film. That's my desk, which I was supposed to clean up before you come, but mm. I did not. <laughs> and these are all nice. different film cameras. It's like a nice, nice vibe. I, I like to be here, like surrounded by all of this. Like, it gets me into creative mood. How many people work here? Uh, 12, 12, 15, depends. And then we also do movie posters. This is a movie poster that we made. Oh, so cool. I want We have this. not rehearsed this. This is just randomly lying here. <laughs> Did you work with some like famous people, celebrities? I've worked with Shah Rukh Khan. <coughs> oh. I actually directed Shah Rukh Khan. That was really nice. He was very polite. Oh. <laughs> and he is like so senior. And it was, I was, I think I've been, that was like three years, four years into the business. Yeah. And um, so, that's I was still crazy. pretty much a rookie yeah. and so I was directing him and he was listening to what I said. So that was wow. really nice. Uh, also, the... How was he in, in real life? Very well spoken, like super polite, so well spoken, like his English is super polished. Mm. I think it doesn't come across because his films are mostly in Hindi, mm. um, but his English is so polished. 
It's really amazing. Then I did something with Alia Bhatt also, where I also directed her, like yeah. a small ad, <laughs> like an, a teaser to one of her films, Razi. That was a couple of years ago. She was also super nice, mm. chill, uh, easygoing, professional. Then we've also worked with a lot of actors who are whose professionality is rather questionable, like Salman Khan. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. makes us wait on set for seven hours easily. Like now we know. So now whenever we shoot with him, we bring our work to set because we know we'll just be sitting there all day uh. and probably not do any work because who knows when he'll show up. Wow. I'm probably not supposed to say this because it's bad for business. <laughs> <laughs> Do you speak how many languages? What language Six, do you speak? I think. Six, wow. German, English, French. My <coughs> Spanish is very rusty. Don't ask me anything in French, Spanish right now. Technically, I'm supposed to speak Spanish and French quite well. but And Swedish and Hindi. In Hindi, I'm not that fluent yet that I could really read <coughs> like a whole book. Mm. Like, I think I could probably. It would take me months and it would not be very enjoyable. How people react when they see that you speak Hindi? A lot of times I think they think they heard me speak Hindi, but then they think that can't be. <laughs> like <laughs> like nice. I say something and they, yeah. would, they would nod and then it would be like, no, no, I must have missed her. <laughs> and then they try in their really bad English and I was like, then I repeat myself and then they're like, she did actually, I thought I was dreaming she spoke <laughs> Hindi, but actually spoke Hindi. <laughs> so, it happens a lot that people yeah. ignore me because yeah. I think it can't be true. <laughs> but um, or they react like, "Oh, you speak Hindi," yeah. and then they because people are not used to like other people picking up their language, which is really funny because like in Germany, if, like somebody comes and doesn't speak German to me, I'm like, "Bro, you live here, you should speak German, right?" That's the attitude that people uh, yeah. bring to. And in India, they're like, "Wow, well, you made the effort to learn our language." I'm like, "Yeah, uh, I live here, right? I should speak your language, yeah. shouldn't I?" Um, but they are so not used to it. I think they're so used to colonizers just coming here and be like, "Yeah, I'm the white person. That's enough if I speak English, and you should bloody well speak English. You don't know how to read and write, but you should speak English." I like to speak a local language, and of course, if you work here. Like working in the film industry, if you're on a shooting floor and you have to get work done, you have to speak Hindi. There is no way of getting any light to move from here to there or the sound to be turned on or turned off yeah. or props being moved or whatever needs to be done on a film set if you don't speak Hindi. Like you have to. How India shaped you, your personality after these years? I think I'm less tense, even though my colleagues still think I'm super strict and tense and I'm a mean mama. <laughs> I don't think so. I think when I go to Germany, people are like, oh my God, she's so lax. <laughs> and there's one famous thing, um, like a, f a word, it's called jugard in India. Yeah. Um, and it means like makeshift. Like, you know, if things are not working, you just somehow make it work. Like you take, like if a leg is missing from a chair, you'll just pick up something else, like a pole and sew it and attach it to the chair and the chair is working again. <laughs> like those kind of, yeah. um, and that has really helped me in my practice and as a producer and as an artist. And I've really learned so much from it. And I think mm. a lot of people make fun of it because it's <laughs> like um, how a child would like go about things. Oh, why don't we fix this with that? But people are so stuck about this this is the way you should do things and if you think outside the box it's good in certain ways like in marketing it's good to think outside the box but then in other ways in professional ways you should just stick to the path that has been designated mm. and that's not working out sometimes it's not working out it has happened so many times like we were shooting in the US for a German production and they just didn't bring enough cables for certain things and they had forgotten and the floor didn't work out for one performance so we just make shift, like we got things from the local, like, you know, um, that tool, tool store where you got, uh, we got planks and we just made the floor mm. on the go over there with nail and hammer and tried to support it with some books. Mm. Nobody sees the books in the shot, like it's fine, nobody sees anything and it worked. But the Germans were just like, what are they doing? Let's call off the shoot, we don't have a floor. We're like, just make it work. Yeah, how difficult is it? Just think about it. It's unconventional. But it's working, no? Somebody can stand on it, nobody's breaking a leg. It may not be according to safety standards, but we want to shoot this, right? So let's yeah. get it done. You don't throw your hands in the air and are like, oh, can't do anything. Yeah. That attitude doesn't work here. People just do it. They somehow find a way and do it. And I think that um, I have imbibed that quite a lot. Hmm. Embraced it. I wrote a book. 
<laughs> I look into camera. I wrote a book. The book is a spiritual book, but it's also about urban youth and coming of age. And it's also about Bombay because uh, at first Bombay is not very pretty, apart from the south part, just colonial buildings. It's pretty, it's pretty gritty and it's pretty exhausting. Um, but once you manage to live here, it really <coughs> elevates you and it can show you sides of yourself that you didn't know. And mm. that's what it's sent to me. So mm. I wanted to write an ode to the city. Let me show you some magic. If you click on this video, I will disappear and reappear again. Let's try it. Three, two, one.